nope, did not see this coming. Not into it. I mean, yeah, it makes sense for the story and his arc and everything, but no. This scene has genuine IRL emotional impact for me. Marissa Tomei is fantastic and they waited for her last scene to really let her shine and I hate them for it. Maybe she's alive in the multiverse, but this one just stings. It's just a full on kick to the feels. <laughs> I'm sorry. This scene, all around, Giacchino's heartbreaking score, the kiss on the head, the fact that he's not even allowed to mourn her for 10 seconds without getting shot by these stormtroopers. Look, it's that cab. That is such a cab. Everything Spider-Man touches comes to ruin, and we, the innocents, are left to pick up the pieces. This is maybe the only true thing Jameson says. He is a classically tragic character. It sucks being a Spider-Man fan because you know it's never truly going to end well. I mean, you get really emotional and gorgeous 2049 shots like this, but it still sucks. Well, you're right, I am magic. We all are, but like, Ned is definitely more magic. <laughs> what? What? Okay, we all pretty much knew, but still this is just one of the coolest things to ever happen. And while we're all getting used to it now, honestly, five years ago this would seem absolutely wackadoo. Incredible times, again, just for movies. I, I was just here. It's also crazy how Into the Spider-Verse made this seem pretty normal, all things considered. Superhero thing. Why'd you do that? <laughs> That slight whisper. No disrespect to anyone else, but now begins the long journey of Andrew Garfield carrying the weight of this universe on his shoulders. Why'd you do that? I was trying to see if you have the tingle thing. I have the tingle thing, just not for bread. Great line. Not That's the win. My Lola's asking if you could just get the cobweb there. Since you're like up there. Yeah. For real, this whole scene is just. Good. For now. So, I opened the wrong portal. And <laughs> be your middle sibling energy. Great, it's just some random guy. You bite your tongue, Ned. Show some respect. And again, let us not take for granted how totally bonkers and wonderful it is that this is happening. Spider-Man, we thought would never spider again are menning here in the MCU. I'd have passed out at least three times by now if I was Jacob or Zendaya. <laughs> it's the Spider-Sense reverb that happened in Spider-Verse. It doesn't get any better than this. Or does it? Empire State, it's a better view. That is a sweet view. I'm gonna say that thing again. My buddies, I've known them for most of my life. I saw them both chill out contemplatively on their respective building tops. Now they're talking to each other, freaking out a bit. Freaking out a bit. Real talk, I went into this like 85% blind, so I knew they were gonna show up, but I was already surprised by how many lines they'd had. So let's just say the freaking out hadn't even begun. <sighs> Hugging. I appreciate that Ned isn't sidelined for this moment. Once a dude finds his love, the temptation can be for everyone else to take a back seat. But Ned is important to Peter. Friendship love is important. Dudes need their dudes. Chicks need their chicks. Buddies need their buddies. Well, those other guys are from your world, right? So you deal with it. If they die, if you kill them. Spidey Sense makes it so they don't even need introductions. I mean, Andrew was wearing his suit, but even when he was in the shadows, it's clear that Tom knew who they were and didn't need confirmation after. And I know I just talked about dudes and their dudes, but oh boy, do we all need those loves too. Sometimes no one but your MJ can get you to rethink a decision like this. And all with just a glance. I lost. I lost Gwen. My, um, she was my MJ. You know, I, uh, I like to cry for effect sometimes in these videos, but Andrew sells this in a way that very clearly goes beyond acting. You can hear the words stick in his mouth and make his lip curl in. You can hear the lump in his throat. Emma Stone is alive, but man, Gwen Stacy is, is dead. And this is like reopening a wound you forgot you had. I got rageful. At some point, I just, I stopped pulling my punches. I always say I want this movie or that movie, but without a hint of irony, not a shade of comedy, I want to see that Spider-Man movie. Make that movie, we'll go to it. Just an unhinged Andrew Garfield going Spider-Ham on everyone? I know, he's moved past it now, so then it's a flashback movie where he's giving a warning to Jessica Drew or whomever, telling her all his exploits and how bad it was, but we'll get to see how awesome it was. Do it. Do it. I just don't want you to end up like, like me. And like... These guys caring for each other just because they can relate? Come on, guys being dudes. I wanted him dead. I got what I wanted. Sneaky way of pointing out that Toby didn't technically kill him. He broke his wrist and then the guy tripped and fell. She told me there was great power comes great responsibility. I'm gonna keep singing Garfield's praises, but let's not sleep on my boy McGuire. I love that he gets to finish the iconic line since it was uttered to him first. Connors, Marco, Dylan, and um, yeah, I get that. Acknowledging out loud that you're willing to save Goblin when he just murdered May wouldn't be anything I'd be ready to do. Well, I got Connors. I've already cured him once, so no big deal. Well, it's no big deal. 
great. Like I said, Andrew's the middle sibling and Toby is filling in his older brother here. And Tom is all, you're a Peter Parker and you're confident? I think I can make an anti-serum for Dr. Osborne. Been thinking about it a long time. Gotta cure all of them. Right? And I also love that Toby gets this opportunity to right, not necessarily wrongs, but things he'd rather end differently. Toby wasn't to blame for Norman's death, but if he can fix him instead, why not? That's what we do. Pure older brother energy. Do you have a best friend too? I did. He died in my arms after he tried to kill me. I know Toby is being sincere here and it was a heart-wrenching moment, but Andrew in the background realizing that the same basic thing happened to him. I'm gonna steal your girl. You have someone? I got no time for uh, Peter Parker stuff, you know. Do you? Uh, that's a little complicated. Oh yeah? Well, tell me more. Actually, I'm 100% here for Spider-Man 4, complete with Bruce Campbell's Mysterio, John Malkovich's Vulture, and Anne Hathaway's Black Cat. Or if it's too weird since she was Catwoman, Alicia Guthberg or Allison Brie? I always felt like Felicia Hardy was older than Spidey though, so Rachel Weiss, Uma Thurman, huh? Keep the I was already in a comic book movie in the 90s thing going? Let's hashtag release the Snyder Cut this piece. It's the meme come to life. Life meme. <laughs> so wait, are you gonna go into battle dressed as a cool youth pastor or? Oh, spider burn. What's that for? Ah, uh, it's my web fluid, it's for my web shooters. Why? Finally, I know we're never gonna get an adequate explanation, but just acknowledging that Raimi is a madman that really pissed off some of the fans at the time. <laughs> Andrew can't take his eyes off the creepy web slingers. Oh, we could portal there. What? I'm magic now. Ned, you were always magic. And I promise you, I won't turn into a supervillain and try to kill you. And reassurance, but we'll we'll see, buddy. We'll see. We're gonna kick some ass. Cure. Cure some ass. Cure that ass. Golden age of movies. Peter Parker, what pernicious propaganda are you peddling? Ah, there's my alliterating adult author. A place that represents second chances. T uh, Tallahassee? Oh, right, Statue of Liberty. That, that makes more sense. <laughs> you okay? Oh, it's my back. Real life imitating art, imitating real life imitating art. You know, because Toby hurt his back and then my back in Spider-Man 2 when he thought he was back, but now he's really back. Nailed it. Yeah, that's good. But also great Logan-esque nod to the fact that even superheroes get old and stuff hurts. Just be careful with backs though there, Andrew. That's good, right? That's better. Yeah. Man, this is just a silly hanging out moment between Spider's men and I wouldn't remove even one second of it. Ah, this is so cool. I always wanted brothers. Yeah, it's fine. I always wanted alternate universe clones of me, so, you know. So you, like, make your own web fluid in your body. Are you teasing me? No, 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 no. He's not teasing you. It's just that we can't do that. Of course he's sensitive about it, both in and out of universe, because that's not how it was in the comics and also gross, man. Like, does it just come out of your wrists or does it come out of anywhere else? Only, only the wrists. Spider Holland asking the Brody Bruce questions we all want the answers to. What are like some of the craziest villains that you guys have fought? I mean, for real, this is exactly what I want this scene to be. Literally, no notes. It's my buddy shooting the breeze with each other while waiting to fight self-proclaimed gods. They're not scared, they're way more interested in each other's lives. An alien made out of black goo once. Yeah, hey, get your chance, Tommy. I fought an alien too on Earth and in space. Oh. Yeah, he was purple. That sounds like a weird note, but Toby specified color, so why not? I wanna fight an alien. Look, I know I'm a little obsessed with pitching non-MCU Spidey movies in this vid, but hear me out. There aren't a ton of alien Spidey villains, but you take the Andrew Spidey flashback movie where he's training Alexander Daddario's Jessica Drew, and he's set the present day fight against the Xenophage that have come to Earth looking for Venom. And she wants to do some crazy Ender's Game level move, and Andrew is trying to teach her how it's not the right move by telling her how he went just law-abiding citizen on Paul Giamatti. He can kill Joseph Gordon-Levitt's jackal, no one will care. Let Andrew fight aliens. Is, is there a hashtag in there? Hashtag give Andrew aliens. I fought a Russian guy in a, like a rhinoceros machine. Because yeah, did you though? We never saw it. You're amazing. Just to take it in for a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can you, take it in. No, I can take you it in. are amazing. I can take it in. Look, it's an in-joke about his movie titles, but also, yeah, these guys are all about building each other up. You throw a bunch of the nicest, most genuine boys in a room together, and they're gonna say nice things to each other. This is exactly how it would go. And the second Spidey hearing from the first Spidey, the OG, the one that he needed to live up to, that he is actually amazing? Come on. Ha! Electro finally got his comic accurate crown. Gross. This reminds me of this moment in Spider-Man 2, and anything that reminds me of how strong Toby Man always seemed is a win. I was in the Avengers. The Avengers? Yeah. That's great. Thank you. What is that? <laughs> See what I mean? They're still excited for Tom to have been part of something that at least sounds important. Is that a band? Are you in a band? So supportive. That's the pointing meme IRL 2.0. Peter 3. Peter 3. <laughs> Crap. Is Andrew Garfield always a win? No, no, no. He, he can't be. We already did his movies. I love you guys. Thank you. <laughs> 
sincerity? I think I've been watching this movie for too long now because now I'm realizing that Andrew dives just like he always did in his movies, Toby does a flip like he did in his movies, and Tom tucks his knees up like he does in his movies. Where does it end? Superior to the usual superhero landing that Wade loves, these are a bunch of Spidey landings. Also, they landed in chronological release order. What's not the love? And speaking of altered clips, after the altered clip from the trailer, love seeing this scene in its full glory. Just wait your turn! Aha, there's that irreverent Andrew quick webbing up. Now that's what I call teamwork. Well, that's a shot from Spider-Man 3 and the score from Tobey Spider-Man. Jamie Foxx still crushing it as Electro. This movie's the pinnacle of second chances. There you go. And I love this. I love every part of this. I never want this movie to end. Now my buddies from the past that hated each other are working together in more than just a quick self-sacrifice? Would this have been the perfect moment to introduce Namor? No. Do I still wish the Savage Submariner rushed through the portal? Yes! Did you just open a portal? Yes, yes sir, I did. Hmm. We really don't know if that's a good hmm or a bad hmm. Yes, Maybe sir. even a tad jealous hmm? I just thought you was gonna be black. Aw, and there's no one around to tell him about Black Panther either. Oh man, I'm sorry. I don't apologize. There's gotta be a black Spider-Man somewhere out there. But boy, do I have some news that's for you. If you like the sickest animation ever, I guess. Well, it's good to see you, dear boy. It's good to see you. You're all grown up. Wait, why is this making me cry? Dang it, Marvel. Stop making me feel my feelings. I'm so old. I've been dangling over the Grand Canyon for 12 I know, hours. I know, I know, I know. I, uh... You went to the Grand Canyon? He could have used your help. No, 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 it's okay. Spidey's has got Spidey's back. All three of the Spider-Men saw the pumpkin. Or at least felt the tinglys. Are you okay? Are you okay? Okay, I jumped the gun on the Andrew moment that really brought me to tears. Giving Andrew the chance at a sliver of redemption choosing to grab her rather than rely on his web this time. Oof. The look on his face crushes me. It says so many things in one look. Andrew Garfield is always a win, but also, told you I'd see you, girl. And just to like step back from the movie for a second, Zendaya getting caught by an OG Spider-Man has to be a freaking trip. Cause let's be honest, she's a fan. She was 18 when Andrew tried to catch Gwen. This has to be an out of body experience. It is for me and I'm not even there. Plus the similar visuals and the clanging of the metal reminding us of the clock pieces hitting the ground. <laughs> I used to talk about how magic wasn't going to be in the MCU, and I really think they weren't sure how far they were going to push it. Iron Man was meant to feel grounded in reality, and then Thor said science and magic are the same thing, but now we've got the fabric of reality between dimensions cracking, so suck it, Lee, from six years ago. Thank you, Mr. Cape, sir. More politeness. Poor Peter. Too weak to send me home to die. Ooh, Sassy Goblin is really pushing his luck now. Whistling at his own knife? He's not, he's not wrong though, it's cool. Amazing how they mix this tension building fight where you know Peter is going a lot harder than normal. Full on rage beast and maybe it's not the best thing, but he's still doing dope moves and it's fun to watch even if we're seeing something he'd probably rather we didn't see. But yeah, I, I don't blame him. And now Toby gets a sliver of redemption to clear his ledger of all regrets. It's Toby's turn to convey so much with just a look understanding, compassion, and empathy, while at the same time a, you know this isn't what we do look. You know this isn't how May wanted you to use your power look. And the trust that Peter 2 has in Peter 1, something we didn't see that time that Tony covered his face thinking Cap would bring the shield down in his head. Spider Brothers know. Big bro Toby knows. <laughs> you are the one that killed her. Willem Dafoe is always a win, especially when he embraces Dafoe. <laughs> He'll cure him, but it's gonna hurt a little. It's fair. Peter. But hey, Willem de Friend is back. And for the record, this is Killing Goblin. Either the cure or just plain murder works, but that bee is dead. You can scour the internet to watch videos on who everyone thinks is in the sky here, but what I really love about it is this tease element of it that is so straight out of the comics. Yeah, that looks like Kraven, Rhino, Scorpion, but the idea that there's more and maybe we can figure it out and maybe we can't is what I like most about it. Unsolvable clues hinting at a massive universe are sometimes the best. I'll see you around. It's a lot, kid. How did he not say no you won't? Too much, Agent J? I, I really don't know how to say this. I, Peter. I want you to know that I... You know. It's what we do. 
Yeah, it's what we do. And it works in universe as the third Spidey finally taking the baton from the OGs. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hugging. Uh, you're in so much pain, huh? I am. Honesty. What, what if we can't remember you? I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to. I don't want to do that. I know. So rarely does the it person of the moment live up to the hype, but. Zendaya has the chops. Believe it. So often it's their personal life shoving fame on them, but with Zendaya, it's pure talent. You promise? Yeah, I promise. Well, there goes Ned's promise to not become Hobgoblin. I can hear him yelling about how Peter broke his promise to come find him now. I love you. I've cried like 17 times so far. Page of Marvel. Love. So here's a long shot, but Peter has this cut in his right cheek right now, and if you've watched the original Spider-Man movies enough, you know that Toby has that scar. So, interdimensional character continuity? I <sighs> hope to see you both again. We all do. You can stay gone. My name is Peter Parker. You don't know me, but I... Aw, the MIT lady pointed out that he wasn't prepared, so he's prepared this time. You didn't rehearse that, did you, Peter? Hey! Oh, wow! The wave past Peter that happened to Toby in the first five minutes of Spider-Man? Coming full circle. My name is Peter Parker, and I... would like a coffee, please. Well, I'll rip your soul right out of your chest. When I was... Oh, Peter, you noticed the band-aid, but not the necklace? She's wearing the broken necklace you gave her. You okay? Doesn't really hurt anymore. <laughs> that line hit me hard the second time through. He's standing there, going through the same thought process that McGuire went through when he told MJ he didn't love her. That loving someone and being Spider-Man puts them in danger, and she says that her cut doesn't hurt anymore, but what he heard and realized was that losing Peter doesn't hurt anymore. It can't, since she doesn't know about the loss. Is there anything else? But also, I'm sorry, what? Why are you breaking promises? I love to see you, you better, you better. Was that nostalgia, deja vu, something, anything? Wait, you tell me when you see me again? <laughs> and then he may never get to say it? Is there a sadder Marvel movie? But maybe, I don't, I'm not sure. I lost a good friend a while back. Felt like this. Shows how important May was for him to not only compare her to Tony, but also not name drop him. And he's finally caught up and is our real Peter Parker. Well, there goes MIT. Peter's entire high school existence has been erased. Yeah, I guess GED makes sense. Even if he's not willing to risk MJ and Ned's lives, obviously he still cares about them. But <laughs> did he like break into Happy's place to steal the Emperor back? And why did Happy think he had Ned's Lego Death Star? You know what, Never mind. Yeah, it's just what they do. I'm not gonna lie, this is by far my new favorite Spidey suit. And after his darker, golden suits, it even feels inspired by his spider brothers. Like iridescent blue. Love it. Love this ending. I mean, I hate this ending. But blank slate Spidey thwipping around in his homemade, comic accurate, inspiring suit in the nighttime Christmas snow? And all to Michael Giacchino's hopeful and optimistic score? Michael Giacchino is always a win. Don't know what the single frame close up is about. Maybe just showing that he doesn't have mechanical irises anymore? By the way, I'm not complaining. Staying on message with the sketchbook credits. Ah, they did it again. Third time's a charm for pointing memes. Football is life. What aliens love eating brains. This is true. And you have to love that Eddie and Venom just decided to stay in Mexico and drink for however many days this was. Love to see character continuity even outside their own franchise. Alien life, uh, finds a way. The multiverse is a concept about which we know frighteningly little. I don't love that this is essentially a trailer. And eh, never mind, this looks awesome. Stoked! This movie exists. Ding. Sorry. I sort of can't believe this movie exists. It's straight out of some R Marvel fan fiction. So like, a spell brings the other two Spideys into the MCU and they team up to fight all the major villains from their franchises with MCU Spidey. And it's incredible. For real, I mean, you watch this two-part video so you know how I feel. This movie's like a dream. One of my favorite theater experiences in recent memory, which, well, I've been like three times in the last three years, but it stands. And I know I said Zendaya probably freaks a bit getting caught by Andrew, but you know who else is freaking out? Toby and Andrew. These guys get to be in the MCU. We talk about how stuff is important because we were kids when we saw it, but I haven't been a kid for a while and like probably makes me lame to say so, but the MCU is pretty dang important to me and I wouldn't be surprised if it is to Toby and Andrew and now they're part of it. I'm just so happy for everyone. Happiness all around. And I really don't want to be the old guy that's all, you kids don't understand how good you have it, but dang, you kids. Comic books weren't cool when we were kids. I mean, I thought they were cool, and obviously I was very, very cool, but reading comic books wasn't considered cool. So to see three generations of Spider-Men in the same movie along with some of the original villains is, it's hard to even put in words. I guess what I'm saying is this movie could have been absolute slop and I probably would have loved every minute of it, but instead it was a beautiful culmination of all the live action Spider-Man lore we've seen. It's everything I loved about comics and those movies done to near perfection as a movie. But okay, are there plot holes? Eh, 
Eh, maybe. Doctor Strange is pretty cavalier about using fabric of reality altering magic. People thought maybe he was a scroll before release. And sure, the world goes from Spider-Man helped save the universe to Spider-Man is a freedom-hating murderer real quick. And no, the Peter Parker Neuralizer spell doesn't leave the story all that tidy, but none of that took me out of the movie. I think it's been five hours and come up with solid reasons for all of those things, and now that I'm saying that I'm super down for it, but we don't need it. Again, I'll take it. Weird, stupid stuff happens all the time in real life, and sometimes the explanation is, oops, all crunch berries. And it's a bold move to alter the MCU like this. I mean, it's entirely possible that Multiverse of Madness is gonna undo or make all this irrelevant, but still. It hadn't occurred to me yet, but this will make Spider-Man the only Avenger with a secret identity. I guess his Avengerness has always been a bit iffy. I can't say if Tony filed the correct paperwork after Peter unblipped in the 15 minutes before he died, but still. They all remember the Spider-Man fighting with them, but not who he was. Interesting. But either way, the emotion is there. The death of Aunt May, Andrew saving MJ, Toby just being there and saving Norman's life. These things alone would make an emotional film. I don't think Marissa Tomei will ever get enough credit for her take on Aunt May. She brought humor and stakes to the character, and while it makes sense for the film, I'm heartbroken to see her go. I do a real deep dive on why Aunt May's delivery of the iconic power and responsibility speech means so much more to Tom than to the other two in my exclusive video over on Nebula, but it's still so powerful to see Toby and Andrew be able to commiserate with Tom in this moment. And the entire cast in this is all in their A-game. Jacob Batalon continues to delight, and I mean it when I say I hope he becomes the Hobgoblin. His comedic timing alone could really make things interesting. And what else can I say about Zendaya? We're watching someone become a full-on world-class A-list actor, and it's just wonderful. I love getting to see Jamie Foxx redeem his Electro. He was scary and funny and more of the Electro we all hoped we would have gotten in Amazing Spider-Man 2. Alfred Molina is a legend, and I love that they let him be more of a hero in this film because I love liking Alfred Molina. And then our guy Willem. I mean, Come on, he goes for it, and it's everything I could have wanted. I enjoyed Dane DeHaan's version of Green Goblin and thought Amazing Spider-Man did some intriguing stuff with him, but it's hard to compete with the OG king of the Goblin game. He's somehow more over-the-top comic booky and yet also more grim and scary. It's goofy to look back at his first appearance. He and Raimi went full camp, but somehow adding it together with these real stakes makes him the perfect level of unhinged. I guess if you're the type of guy to make movies like Antichrist and The Lighthouse, you can end up a little out there. Keep being you, Willem. And my boys. Look at these boys. The three of them knock it out of the park. Holland solidifies his place as probably the best live action Spider-Man, but our previous Spideys do a great job of reminding us why they were both great. Toby, our first love, reminding us why he broke all the records back in the day. We didn't know a lot, but he showed us the ropes and we'll always love him for it. Andrew. Sweet, sweet Andrew. The chaos Spidey. Our relationship with Andrew was quick and wild. It didn't end well, but dang, it was nice to see him again. He made us realize we didn't appreciate him enough when we had him. His character also seems to be going through the most, so we wouldn't mind slumming it a bit and catching up with him for a little part three if you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. And Tom, the Spidey we never knew we needed but are now happy to be with. For real, Tom Holland is a true talent. And the MCU should feel lucky to have snagged somebody like him on the rise. Marvel continues to make bangers and they might have even saved Sony along the way? I mean, how many trilogies is this now with no misses? That used to be rare. As I said, I'd gladly watch more Maguire or Garfield Spider-Mans. Now, if only Disney would stop being cowards and make Willow part of the Marvel canon as well. Do it, cowards. Those are my thoughts on No Way Home, except for the Nebula exclusive I have all about the different Peter's origin stories and why I think Tom's is by far the best. And you can sign up a curiosity stream at my link and you can watch it. And the response has been great, so I'm gonna start thinking about what other franchises would work for this kind of retrospective. In the meantime, next week in movie. Things just got out of hand.